Welcome back. According to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, 28% of households in the state are actually rented right now. Meanwhile, Michigan realtors say the average home sale price in Michigan was just over $282,000 in May. That's up 2.45% year over year. So are there any advantages right now for buyers or sellers? For some expert analysis, we're joined by James Danley of James Danley and Associates. Thanks a lot for coming in this morning. Pleasure to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. All yeah, right. Appreciate it. So we really need to know about this. A lot of people still looking for homes. Mortgage rates are so high. What kind of market trends can buyers and sellers see in the next little while? So I think to clearly answer that question, we want to look at the history of the market and to see where, we, where we're at now and why we got here and then look forward. So if you look at post COVID, uh, there are a few things that happened that really, one, we funneled a lot of cash in the market. So that money chased scarce and desirable assets. Everyone was very cash flush. Now the Fed's in, interest rates have gone up. That affects payments. And so now we're in like a little bit of a choppy market where we have a shortage of supply um, for inventory and so buyers are a little pickier than they've been in the past. So that means that like when you look at the general market, um, each market subset kind of affects, it, it, it changes differently based on the market demographics and where people are looking to buy housing. So in Metro Detroit, for instance, people want to live in walkable communities. Mm -hmm. They want to live in Royal Oak, Ferndale, Berkeley, easy access to shopping, retail. And so those areas tend to be in higher demand than more rural communities. Um, and so when you look at trends going forward, I think that we're going to see um, a continued shortage of that housing stock because you can't easily create more walkable communities in southeastern Michigan. So for the majority of housing stock, it's going to stay in demand and prices are going to continue to rise. And I know predictions are super hard to make, right? And you probably get asked this all the time, but are home prices going to go? We have four months left in 2023. Do you think home prices are going to go down sometime by the end of the year and then what what do, how do things look for the beginning of 2020 so i think what we've seen this year is certain pricing categories have come down others have stayed up or increased in price so like the, the, the housing stock that would be considered inferior or less desirable to most millennial buyers right so if it's not move-in ready it's not fully renovated if it's on a high traffic road or in a less than ideal location if it doesn't have a basement that product is actually coming down because like two years ago everything sold because there mm -hmm. was no inventory so it didn't matter what the housing product was like it sold now we're seeing the inferior housing categories like the pricing on those is coming down but the stuff that's move-in ready that's in a desirable location that stuff is still trading and buyers are being a little more picky because their payments are higher so they really are waiting for what they want and if you look at each individual market category, the top of the market has tended to slow a little bit. So in Royal Oak, for instance, like the stuff that's over $900,000 has slowed, that inventory has increased. So maybe the pricing in that category is coming down a little bit, but the lower end of the middle of the market is still on fire because everyone's kind of taking a price category down. Um, and then in Birmingham, for instance, like the stuff that's over 3 million slowed down, the stuff below that's still very hot. So it's, each market's somewhat different. So what kind of advice can we have for first time home buyers? I mean, for a first time buyer, this is a tough time to get in the market with the way their interest rates are. What would you say to them? It is. I think that a lot of people are waiting right now um, for next year or, or the future because they think there's going to be some sort of correction in pricing. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any uh, data path to that. So to really bring pricing down, you're going to have to increase supply substantially. And we're not in a situation where we would see that happen. So. If you look at the last market crash in 2008, we artificially created a mass amount of supply because we had extremely low interest rates. People could get four or five mortgages without any sort of income verification. So the builders over speculated and built a lot of supply and inventory. Mm -hmm. And back then people were trending towards suburban communities. They were move, moving out into more rural areas so you could buy land, develop housing stock, and we created a ton of supply. So in 2008, when the market crashed, um, the, essentially you cut off lending so no one could get a mortgage and then you flooded the market with all the bank REO supply that was in their balance sheet. So you flipped the supply demand imbalance. The, like the last 15 years after that, we really haven't created a lot of new housing stock for the millennials. No one thought they were gonna buy. Now they're all buying housing stock. Surprise. Yeah. So, and we also have no one that's going into building trades. So in Michigan, we have a few different shortages. Uh, we have a shortage of trades. Um, and we have a shortage of walkable communities, which is the desirable housing stock. Less of the younger you know, couples and families are moving out into the suburbs. They want to be closer to walkable communities. So those two general factors affect the supply and demand for housing stocks. So looking into next year, um, historically, election years, we've always reduced interest rates. I think the Fed's getting really tough this year. They're hiking interest rates as much as they can. But usually they'll fall under political pressure and they'll bring interest rates down during election year. So I think that's likely that next year will actually be a little stronger 
of a year than this year has been. Like this year has been a little choppy. Certain housing prices have maintained for the desirable housing stock. Other stuff's come down a little bit. In general, overall, housing prices have stayed up. I think next year we might have more of a competitive market like we saw a year or so ago if they bring interest rates down. Because a lot of buyers are waiting, either they're renting or they're waiting for the perfect type house to buy. And so once interest rates come down and payments get more reasonable, they're going to be competing again for the same shortage of housing inventory. And we probably won't have any more supply. Yeah, so much just hinges on those interest rates. You mentioned walkable communities. What else are buyers looking for right now? Um, they want move-in ready and done. If it's not moving ready and done, it's a challenge because it's hard to find contractors at reasonable pricing. It's a pain in the ass to manage a, a renovation project from start to finish. And so the young professionals that, that fill the majority of the buyer pools for the millennials, the first-time home buyers, they're both working professionals. They're less handy than, they, than most people were you know, 30 years ago. Um, and so they need to hire that out, and it's a challenge, and it's difficult to do. And then they usually have to live somewhere else during the interim. So they just want to buy and pay for what's done. And that's really where the demand is. It's on fully renovated, updated housing stock, which we don't have enough of. So, you know, you mentioned something that I want to just delve into a little more. You said, you know, perhaps next year, election year, if they do drop interest rates, will make the market a little more competitive. So right now you have, you know, let's say a house at $500,000 with a higher mortgage rate. So next year they drop rates, that same house, let's say it's $500,000, but people are actively bidding on it. So then it goes it up. up. So, I mean, now might not be a horrible time to buy money-wise. I mean, Correct, monthly yeah. payment-wise. If, if, you're, if you're a seller or if you're a buyer, if you're, right now would be an ideal time to buy. Between now and the end of the year, the market in Michigan always slows down seasonally in the winter. Mm -hmm. So the best buying, I used to flip and build houses for a living. So like the best buying season was always the last handful of months of the year because you have a lot of people that get motivated. They need to move before winter. They don't want to deal with the effects of snow and the seasonality. <laughs> And there's just less buyers that are looking because most people don't want to move that time of year. So if you're buying, now is the best time to negotiate potentially good pricing, although there's not a lot of inventory. If you're willing to do some renovation work or updates, it's a great time to buy. Um, if you're selling, I think you have some time. I think next spring might be a more ideal time to sell mm -hmm. than the second half of this year unless you absolutely, absolutely need to. And if you want to do some updates to position your property for maximum sale value, you could do a kitchen or a master bath You know, between now in next year and then sell in the, the prime of the market. That's that what everyone looks for, the, the kitchen, kitchen and the, the bath, bathroom. right? All right. <laughs> well, it sounds like you shared your advice for a first time home buyer. So we, we've, we've got that. I mean, any other words of advice for someone who might just be thinking, OK, I'm ready to buy. This might be the time to do it. I think, um, yeah, I mean, call someone, get good counsel and, and advice, like shoot us a phone call. Depending on where you're trying to buy in the market, we can give you good guidance on, on your exit plan. So with most of the buyers we work with, it's like, hey, how long do you plan on being here? Is it three, five years? What, what's your exit strategy? Is it two years? If you're getting transferred in, you might get transferred back out. Um, let's look at that timeline and let's buy strategically so that you're in a good position for resale um, when you do need to sell or upgrade. So where because do they find you? Uh, two four eight six seven one three zero nine two or um, liveworksell.com. Yeah, there you go. That's yeah. what we want. The website easier to remember. Everyone's <laughs> just giving out their number today. I know. Hey, I know. Good <laughs> connection, right to James. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. All right, thank you so much, James, for being Pleasure here. Pleasure to be here.